an intro? Good morning, everyone, and welcome to church on such a beautiful Sunday. So glad you're here, and wherever you may be watching on our streaming services, we're going to start right now by singing in our opening chant, The Light of God. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God informs us. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. The light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. The light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Amen. Good morning. We are so delighted to have you all here and on Facebook Live and Zoom. This is that time where we get to silence our phones. And then let us join together in prayer. I know that God is all there is. God is present in beauty and love and joy and truth and healing. God is faith. God is opening up our hearts to that love that is present within every one of us. And I know that I am love. I am an individualized expression of God. I know that I am beauty and faith and trust and love. And I know that I can speak the word here today because of this consciousness, because I am that perfect spiritual expression of what God is. And I know the truth for this service. And that is exactly what it is. It is in service to all of us, for that light, for that love that is within us. We know that God is here present within all that is helping. We know that God is working through Dr. Mark and we open ourselves up to hearing exactly what we need to hear today. And Dr. Mark's word, and the music, and the singing. And I know that I am ready for that and I accept that and I say yes to it as I know we all do. And I'm so grateful, so I say thank you, and I release my word into this perfect law, knowing it is done, and so it is, and together we say, Amen. Be still and know that I am God. Be still. Peace. 
still and know that I am God. Be still, be still, be still and know that I am love. Be still. still and know that I am love. Be still, be still, be still and know that I am peace. Be still. still and know that I am peace. Be still, be still, be still and know that I am God. Be still. and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join in singing our congregational song, God is the love that I am. going to meditate now for the next five minutes, I invite you to close your eyes and silently repeat the mantra, God's the love that I am. If your mind wanders, just bring it back to silently repeating, God's the love that I am, and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
So many choices in the world today Too many things can blow your mind And if you're looking for a simple truth To see you on your way Remember, choose love Choose love Choose love And keep on shining a light And choose love Shining a light and choose love. Life is a game that we're all free to play. You can hold it down or let it breathe. And if you're looking for a simple song to sing along the way. Thank you for being here. I'm so happy we're all together. Well, this is in honor of Father's Day, so let me share this with you. Uh, today is for the fathers. It's for the grandfathers, uncles, brothers, friends, and sons. For the most important man in anyone's life, the one who gave us life. Here's to you, the dads who play endless games of go fish with their kids and always let them win. And those who always played to win every time, thinking that their children would grow stronger through defeat. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, this is for the fathers who worked in fields and factories, taught in classrooms, or sat in office cubicles eight long hours a day, I would say at least. <laughs> Here's to those who performed life-saving surgery and those who drove their truck through long hours and nights. Here's to those who loved every minute of their labor and those who only worked so their families could survive. To the sleepless dads who have walked in silent fear that their babies wouldn't make it through the night, or their teenagers survive their first time driving alone. Mm. Those who lost children, those who found them in different ways. Here's to tears not shed and hugs not given for fear of appearing weak. Here's to dads who built with hammer and saw and those who wouldn't know how. The fathers who are afraid of spiders and yet slay the great dragons of fear in their little ones. The fathers who tried and those who didn't. The fathers who gave us life and walked away. And those who stayed long past the life of their marriage to give something to their children. Here's to the fathers who love their children's mothers and those who no longer could. The fathers who hurt because their children have been kept from them. And those who are both father and mother. Stay at home dads and stay away dads, the ones we wanted but never knew, the helpless hurting fathers and the brave and strong one, for all of the ways of fatherhood, here's to you. 
So if you are a father or you put that fathering energy into the universe, would you stand and let us applaud for you and love you and acknowledge you on Father's Day? So let's do that for anybody who's a dad. Yay! Great. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now, today is also, as it happens, to be Juneteenth, okay? And so this is often considered America's second Independence Day, okay? Yes. Uh, and this is to commemorate the emancipation of slaves in America. And so on June 19th in 1865, and of all places, Texas. I, I mean, I'm, hey, look, my partner's from Texas, so I can say this. Really, Texas? Wow. I am so proud that on June 19th, 1865, in Texas, this took place. And so it's... Um, you know, I think it's a really good thing that we celebrate because it helps heal, I think, the greatest stain on the American soul, uh, the stain of slavery. So uh, this is an important thing for us to acknowledge and give voice to today. The other thing I have to share with you before I do my talk is that in our church, we have licensed practitioners. So if you came from a different teaching or different denomination, these would sort of be like licensed lay ministers. They have an ecclesiastical license in our church, and at our particular church, it is not easy to become a practitioner. I think the denomination requires like about six classes or something like that. We require 13. So yesterday, we had four individuals who completed and are now licensed as practitioners. So we have Luana Scherzberg is right here, so let's acknowledge her and love her. And Mark Crowell, Nikki Svara, and Brenda Jordan. I don't know if any of them are here or not today. But anyway, this is uh, just a wonderful thing in the life of our church, and these people have worked tremendously hard, all to serve you. So I, I'm just so thrilled. So now today, I want to talk a little bit about the power of love. Um, and I think that what challenges us is that there is a collective belief that there is just not enough love. And that belief that there is not enough love, not enough to go around, which actually, if you look at it, it's really a scarcity mentality, that there's not enough love. It's a problem, and it causes problems. See, because what I believe is spiritually true, what I believe is spiritually accurate, is the more love that flows through us, out from us, into the world, the more that there actually is within us. You cannot possibly give all your love away. Nobody has ever said, oh, I'm out of love. I mean, I'm, just, I'm just out. I'm out, you know? Love, I think, is the most powerful healing force there is. Emmett Fox has written this wonderful poem, which I'm not going to read all of today, but in it he says, if only you could love enough, you would be the most powerful person in the world. So what that says to me is that when I'm in that place where I am not loving, I am so disempowered. I am really, really disempowered. You know, I... Um, When a baby comes into the world, it seems to me that they know they deserve to be loved and taken care of. Now, babies can have every material thing, right? But without love, they will wither and ultimately die. See, because as spiritual beings, I think we cannot survive without love. Without sufficient love, I think what happens is we get off track. We lose our way. Right? And, and, and I certainly have experienced that. I don't know if you have. But imagine if we could, you know, if we could all be loved and accepted and celebrated for exactly who we are, as we are right now, I think that would just be the most extraordinary thing if everybody, everybody on the face of the planet is loved and accepted and celebrated for who they are. See, the way it works is... You can't get it from others unless you give it, right? And by give it, I mean you have to give it to yourself first, and then we can love others. But, you know, people say, this loving yourself thing, this is very difficult. I don't understand loving myself, and then I'll be able to love others. Well, sometimes I think it also works the opposite, that the way you get to love yourself is you are loving toward other people, and then you feel better about yourself, right? So I think it can go 
Either way, that sometimes we have to love ourselves before we can love others, and I think sometimes we have to love other people. Put that loving energy out there. Be of service in the world, and then you will feel better about yourself. Because really, that's where self-esteem comes from. Self-esteem comes from doing good in the world. And we know, we all know, we all understand when we do good in the world. So I think what this means, really, is that we have to let prejudice go completely. See, God made all of us, right? And so I believe spiritual truth is that we are all beautiful expressions of God. The beauty is actually in the diversity, right? I don't know where people got off track and thought the beauty was in the sameness, but really the beauty is in the diversity. Now, I don't have much of a yard now where I live, but I've had a big yard in the past, and I have a little, little one now, and, um, and I plant a lot of flowers, and I'm not really great with it, although I enjoy it, but about half of what I plant doesn't make it, I'm sorry to say. I just pick things based on what I like, not like, oh, is this going to grow in this spot really well? Anyway, what, one of the things I notice is that, you know, when spring comes, there are crocuses and daffodils and paper white narcissus and then eventually tulips, you know, and now here we are in summer and the flowers are different. And in the fall, we'll have a whole new batch of flowers, you know, and I think they're all good. They're all good. Nature has made no mistakes where that is concerned, right? Nature is filled with difference, and that difference is just so beautiful. So I, I think about that, and I think, okay, well, if we said we can only have one kind of flower, my God, that would be so limiting. It would be so boring. It would be so sad, because part of what makes it wonderful is the diversity is the uniqueness. And yes, sometimes just one of something is okay, but really the benefit, the blessing is in everything, everyone, I think, together. I think when we let go of prejudice, we can see, really see the beauty. In. And beauty, what I mean by beauty is beauty is what God's love looks like. When God's love is manifested, it's always beautiful. Right? So children, I think, want to be like someone when, when, when they're little because they think it's going to be safe. You know, so early on, you know, they want to be like their parents. Then they want to be like maybe uh, a, a, some, some famous figure or something like that. But the important thing to remember, I believe, is that God made us all unique. There is never going to be another like you. This also means that your soul's journey is your own. And it would be a mistake for us to look at other people and compare how our soul's journey is doing compared to their outer life, right? So this is the meaning of don't, let your, don't compare your inside to somebody else's outside. This is it, right? Because everybody, every soul has incarnated here with a different journey. And clearly, some people have seemingly very difficult journeys. Other people have, well, there, there are just so many different journeys. Hmm? The science of mind says, though, that your thought Whatever your journey is, your thought is the most powerful thing you have to evolve and heal and grow and change your life. And I would add to that your thought, but also the spiritual practice you do. Because nothing out here is going to change until something in here changes within us. So what I'm going to ask us to do today is something that's probably going to seem really obvious, but I'm going to ask you to stop berating yourself, to stop beating yourself up, because nothing good can come from it. And I know maybe many of us are not doing this, except I would say the exception is when we in, are doing something new. See, the, I think people often avoid new things because they won't be good at it, or they expect themselves to be good at it. And you know, you don't have to be good, you don't have to be a pro out of the gate. You know, just get to experience something new. I think everybody, everybody is ready. Everybody's talking about how they'd like to see change in the world. Well, how will that happen, right? How will that happen? I think the first thing is that we have to be willing to go within and make the changes in here, right? Make the changes in here. Where, where, am, where is my consciousness in separation? Where do I see people as other? Where do I see people as different? Where do I have something out here in the world that is so upsetting to me that I, I use that as a reason to not um, be loving and filled with and, and, and sending light out into the world. So yeah, it starts with a thought, but it also starts with our own spiritual practice, right? Because we all understand when we, when we meditate, we're actually emitting different brainwaves. So we're being rewired. 
you know, during that process. So years ago, um, there was a, a doctor, a surgeon, and a writer. His name was Bernie Siegel, and I just loved his work. He wrote a couple of books, uh, Love Medicine, Miracles, Peace, Love, and Healing. Those were his titles. And so Bernie Siegel said, I believe that all disease is ultimately related to a lack of love. He said, or love that is only conditional. Wow, that is so interesting. So he goes on to say that unconditional love is the most powerful stimulant to the immune system. Basically, love heals. So if we know that, if we know that love heals, why would we be anything other than loving? Because we know it's not going to contribute to well-being for ourselves, other people, or the planet. So what is it that depresses the immune system? Right? So think about that and think, well, all right, fear, anxiety, bitterness, anger, resentment, Misery, you know, just saying those things it like brings me down, right? See, because what happens is they stop, I think they stop the life flow. They, they stop the flow of joy in our being. Now, metaphysically, people have known this for, and said this for years, that metaphysically your heart is the love center, right? And that your blood is joy. So joy, the, the heart, love pumps joy through your being, right? So if we go for joy in our life, I mean like a deep inner joy, can, I'm wondering if we can get to a place where we can honestly say every day, it's great to be alive. It is great to be alive. See, because I believe that when I'm in a place where it feels great to be alive, the next natural thing for me to do is say, all right, what can I do? What, what can I do in the world? What, what, can I do? what can I contribute to? How can I participate in some way? Because I feel so good, I want to spread that around. Right? I, I want to give that away. So if I could find a place to serve, to give to others, see, because... You cannot help but feel a bit more hopeful and a little better about yourself and a little better about the world if you found some avenue somewhere in your life to be of service. I think that all spiritual paths say this, that ultimately at some point you've got to find a way, a place, a venue to be of service. Um, God, I realize I'm talking a lot about babies this morning, but I am kind of fascinated by them. Uh, I think that babies live in the now. You know, they really do. They express immediately, you know, Rah, food, rah, change me, rah, I need a nap, rah, pick me up, whatever. You know, they, they just, they don't hold it up. I'm holding on to this for years. Last Thursday, you didn't pick me up. You know, I'll never get over it. You had applesauce and I wanted mushed berries instead. You know, I also realized that a, a baby or young kids will cry, they'll express their upset, and a minute later, they're fine with it. They've let it go. You know, the, the little other little baby that they were upset with, they're hugging and kissing on, you know? They, they know, they just know they deserve to be loved. <sighs> wow, that is so fantastic that they know, they know somebody's going to pick them up, somebody's going to feed them, somebody's going to care about them. <sighs> if I could let go of false ideas that I have picked up, if we could let go of false ideas that we have picked up around love, or say health, or life itself, or being abundant. Ask yourself, where do I have ideas? Where do I have thinking that really just doesn't serve me? And it may have served you at an earlier time. I realize sometimes we have thinking that's important to us because maybe it protects us in a situation, you know? Or, but, but if we have thinking today that does not serve us anymore, it would behoove us to identify it and start to work on that. Any place in our life where there's trouble, science of mind says there is a false idea operating in consciousness. So if I have trouble with my body or I'm having trouble with another person, there's a false idea operating in my consciousness that is not accepting the truth of our being. So if I would just notice it, if I could just begin by noticing, because we say that awareness is curative. So if I notice, ooh, I have this thought, that's not good. I have this thought, that's not going to serve. Not going to serve me, it's not going to serve other people. Notice it, sit with it, and then ask, what do I need to know? What is it that I need to know here? Why am I so stirred up about this? Or why do I have such a big reaction to that? Or why, why am I so negative around this? What do I need to know? Ideally, we need to have a strong spiritual connection, a strong mental connection, strong emotional, and strong physical. Right? So the, the strong spiritual connection, well, obviously, you know, we, we're cultivating an inner life. 
But mentally, I think it has a lot to do with your attitude about life and your attitude about yourself. Emotionally, are we holding on to things that we should have let go of? And now is the perfect time to do that? And also taking good care of ourselves physically. I think all of these are components of good consciousness. And so in balance, our spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical, when those are in balance, things can work pretty well. We'll come back to the love part. When you love yourself, I think it's easy to love other people because your tank is already full. Not full from an outside source, but full from an inside source. So to love yourself, you have to forgive yourself. You know? And I know everybody's got stuff that it's hard to let go of. I get it. But you have to, you've got to go beyond your lists of, of, of whys and whens and all that. Because here it is. If you don't love yourself today, you're not going to do it tomorrow. Because the consciousness that you're cultivating today is the one that you're going to be really stepping into in an even greater way tomorrow. Right? So, so what does this involve? I think that what this involves, if nothing else, it's forgiving yourself for everything. Look, nobody ever gets up on any given day and says, OK, God, thanks for a new day. Now let me do some stuff that's really going to muck it up for years. You know? let, me, let me make some really bad choices today, God. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the inspiration to set myself back a decade. Yes, that's one. No, nobody does that. Right? So, Everybody has to just forgive themselves for everything. I really believe, and I mean this, that if we could have done better at the time, we would have. But based on the consciousness we had and the ability and the skills and the awareness and how tired we were or how hungry we were, all of that stuff, you know, I think that nothing, it is an old idea, and it was never a good one to begin with, that you could criticize yourself into better. right? Because that has just not worked. How many of us have tried that for years and years and years? I will just criticize myself. I'll be a little harder on myself. I'll demand a little more of myself. Well, I think demanding more of yourself is a wonderful thing. But you know, criticizing ourselves never made us better, did it? No. You know, it, it, it just, we never got better. We never felt empowered or lifted up by being criticized. So how can we change you know, this thinking of that I'm wrong? Uh, well, I think we can change. Rather than from I'm wrong, we could change within ourselves from a place of acceptance, um, from a place of choice, from a place of love. Right? I'm, I'm choosing not because I have to beat, I, I'm going to beat up on myself, but I'm choosing because I'm accepting myself in a greater way. See, I think we create messes again and again. I certainly have. This was actually one of the ways I knew that I must be powerful because I had really screwed things up so badly that I thought, wow, my mind has really made some significant messes over the years. Hmm, if I could work intelligently with these principles, I could probably create some good as opposed to creating these messes that I would find myself in. Now, the fact that we create them, I believe we have the capacity to uncreate them. And so I know for myself, I am really, I'm willing to change. You know, I, I'm at a point in my life now where it's like, OK, I want to become aware of the stuff that needs to be changed, and I want to change it. I don't want to drag it around anymore. Though so Ernest Holmes said this wonderful line, if you change your thinking, you would change your life. Well, yes, change your words and thoughts. But if we change our words and thoughts, what is the result of that? We could actually change our reality. Because the universe hears and responds to everything we think, everything we say. Because the universe always says yes. That's, that's the way it's set up. The universe only knows to say yes. I'm stupid, the universe says, yes, you are. And he says, I'm capable, the universe says, yes, you are. I'm a dummy. And the universe says, you sure are. And I say, oh my god, I can do anything I put my mind to. And the universe says, yes, you absolutely can. So every thought and word we speak affirms something, right? I'm not good enough. I don't deserve, ba -da -da -da. we're always affirming something. So what if every time, this is the homework, OK? This is the homework portion of our program. What if every time we were about to criticize, we were about to complain? Because you know, I can always catch, my, I, I catch myself. It's like, oh, I'm going down that road. I'm going to say something. It's, it happens in a split second. I'm going to say something that I shouldn't say. And that's the moment when I could self-correct. And sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. And I'm embarrassed about the times I don't. But what if every time we were about to criticize or complain, we praised instead? You know, so 
I turn on the TV and I see someone, I don't know, fill in a name. You get to fill in, okay? But I see someone there that I have lots of opinion about. And rather than complain or criticize, what if I said, I praise you, person on TV. I raise you, person on TV, in the name of love. I praise you, person on TV. I raise you, person on TV, in the name of peace, in the name of freedom, in the name of all good things, right? Okay. Emma Curtis Hopkins teaches this. And she says, metaphysical, now this is, this is coming to us from the 1800s. It's been known for a long time. Metaphysical rule number one, don't complain. I used to say that differently, but I don't need to say it that way now. Uh, just don't complain. So, so what do we do instead? Say what's good. Appreciate what's good right now. See, I think it's important for us to really rejoice in other people's success because there's plenty for everybody. You know, lots of people can be successful at whatever it is they're doing. You know, there is enough, you know, this is shocking to me, but it, it shows me how off track I think we've gotten. Do you know that the earth produces more than enough food to feed everybody on the planet? And yet, every day, tens of thousands of people die of starvation. Why do people starve? And you know what people say? They love to say, why does God let this happen? Why does God let this happen? God doesn't. God created this big, abundant, food-producing earth. Oh, God doesn't. That means we do. I'm so embarrassed once again. That's why people starve, because we have not made loving each other the priority. And you know, I, I don't think we have to look far now. Everybody gets it. We see the results of ongoing not loving and caring about each other all over the planet. We see the breakdown, right? So the truth is that there is enough. There is absolutely enough. God has created an abundance on the planet. Now, I believe, I believe that there are places, there are times for all of us where there is so much love on the planet that we think, oh my God, this is so wonderful, I think I'm going to burst, I think I'm going to explode. But then the pendulum swings and there are the things like we don't feed people, right? So I think we're shown again and again that we have the capacity to be extraordinarily loving and with that we could change everything. But I think also we're shown again and again how unloving we can be. And when we are unloving, clearly the results are not good. You know, I hear every day, every day, every day people saying something about healing the planet, healing the planet, healing the planet. Well, the fact is we cannot heal the planet while we allow anybody to suffer. You know, that's, that's, that's just not a workable model anymore. I mean, maybe, maybe some people thought it was workable at an earlier time, but you know, we've, we, we have, and I don't say this to, I don't want to bum anybody out, you know, but I want people to really think. I think we've made a mess of the ocean, and I find that very upsetting. But then again, we're also kind of messing with the land, don't you think? And, and, and well, you don't have to look far to look up and see that we've messed with the air, and we're certainly not being good to our physical bodies. You know, so, okay, we see discord. It's not hard to look and see discord. But we have to get, and I think when we see this discord, this should inspire us to say, oh, you know, it's really important now. Now is the time to get our act together. Now is the time to show up as a really conscious, spiritual being, you know, and, and, and roll my sleeves up. I remember, I'm really dating myself here, but in the mm, early to mid-'80s, um, you all remember Louise Hay. Louise Hay started a hayride. It was a, a group in West Hollywood for, for men who had AIDS. It started in her living room with, I think, six people she had. And, and, and her thing was, we're going to get together and we're going to share as much positive stuff as we can. If we find anything good, anything that's working, we're going to share it. But what we're also going to do is, she said, we're going to forgive. And we're going to let go of resentments. We're going to dissolve all our resentments. And we're going to support each other. And we're going to love ourselves. And it was very, very simple, simple work. And I think it had an enormous impact 
um, because Louise's teachings went around the world, right? So the news, the news is not how bad things are, okay? That's, that's, that's not the news. The news, I think, is how good things could be. And I think that we have everything we need within us right now that it could all be much better than it is. Let's pray. <laughs> Thank you. So we turn our attention inward now, knowing that right where we are, the principle, the power, the presence of God, infinite loving spirit is right here. That the spirit of God within each and every one of us is the most true, real thing about us. And I know that spirit is a spirit of love. So I know that love is real in our lives, in our minds, in our bodies, in our emotions. That love is the order of the day. And like Emmett Fox says, if only we could love enough, we would be the most powerful people in the world. So I declare for us here and now that we are open to being more loving, we are willing to being more loving than we have ever been before. And I know and I accept and I believe with all of my being that love heals. It heals everything and everyone. So as we call to mind this morning situations that could use some healing love, we see those situations in our mind's eye. And we feel the love of God, the love of the infinite, the love of the universe moving through us out into our world, uplifting those situations, adding light, adding love, adding healing. We think about the world that we live in right now and wherever people are marginalized, wherever people struggle, wherever people suffer, we let our prayer be right there as a revelation of God's love and healing and peace and abundance for all people. So we include in our prayer our family members and friends, our parents and children, and yes, because it's Father's Day, think of your earthly father or whoever fathered you. Think of those individuals and wrap your spiritual arms around them, sending them light and love and healing. And now we'll check in with our own consciousness for just a moment and say, what is it, Spirit? What is it I need to learn? What is it I need to embrace? What is it I need to be? to have full and complete healing in my life and receive whatever the Spirit gives to you. And now ask, what is my part in the world today? How do I, have, how do I add my consciousness to being part of some healing on the planet? And again, receive whatever Spirit gives you. And so together in consciousness, we bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today, that there is healing for each and every one of us, and we say yes to it. So with an open, gracious, full heart, I give thanks that this is the truth. I release this word into God's perfect law, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. All right, I invite you to take your gift and hold it over your heart as we say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much.
your fellow man Lend him a helping hand Put a little love in your heart You see it's getting late Oh, please don't hesitate Put a little love in your heart And the world Will be a better place Yes, this world is going to be a better place for you and me. You just wait and you'll see. Okay, put a little love in your heart or put a little Darius in your home by going to DariusLux.com. That's D-A-R-I-U-S-L-U-X.com. Or you can find him on iTunes or Spotify. Okay, so now I need these so I can tell you what's happening here. All right. If this is your first time at our church, we are delighted you are here. Please stop by the welcome table on the patio to pick up a packet of information just for you. We make it easy for you to make donations to our church. The text to give number is inside your program and a QR code is on the back or go to nhcrs.org slash give. Prayer with a practitioner is available after service in person and on Zoom and now we have a few new ones, yay. Uh, Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney Steen. Meditation is at 6.50 p.m. The service starts at 7 p.m. Join Reverend Sidney this week as she shares on the topic, Your Superpower. 
spiritual vision. Japan trip with Dr. Mark, October 2022. Join Dr. Mark for the spiritual adventure of a lifetime. For details and sign up, visit our website today. Pray like you've never prayed before. Rock Your Word is Reverend Sydney's brand new six week how to pray class. Join Reverend Sydney starting June 28th for this transformational class where you'll learn affirmative, powerful, and effective prayer. Sign up on our website today. Cost is $175. Required text is available in the bookstore or online. Love and Kindness Ministry. Our Love and Kindness Ministry will be serving lunch in the park today at 1230 to people who are homeless and others. Please sign up on the patio to support this ministry or contact Gilda Gomez through our website. If you or a loved one could use some enhanced spiritual support, we have a pastoral care team ready to help. Please reach out to our team through our website. Save the date. July 3rd, we are celebrating the holiday weekend with a free barbecue after the 1130 service. Join us for delicious food, fellowship, and music by Mary Highland and Gilbert Acuna. Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday from 7.55 to 8.15 a.m. Visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. And now you can please rise and we will sing the peace song. Please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I, consciousness of peace. I, release, all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I see Barbara.